Okay, so I've made some progress on these farmhouse chairs. Um, it's definitely not going as quickly as I had anticipated. But I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of coming up with a lot of this stuff on my own. For example, the, um, the decorative piece that goes on the backs of the chairs. It's very ornate and, you know, originally I thought I might have been able to do it with some tongue and groove, but I don't know if I got time for that. On top of that, it's very thin. It's only going to be three-eighths of an inch thick when I'm done, so this is what I've come up with. I'm gluing up these very thin panels. Here's a couple I have over here that I'll bring out. Okay, so each one of these guys is an eighth of an inch thick. I believe what I'm going to do is make my own plywood out of solid oak, like so. Three, and make it three ply, three layers thick, and, um, and then I will cut the design out of that. Um, I don't think I'm going to make three plies of these flat panels. I believe this is just going to be the middle ply because it's going to be the horizontal surface and on the top and the back I'm actually going to lay pieces lay out like I don't know if it would be like um, parquet style I don't know you know I don't I don't know what the terminology is but basically I'm lam I'm gonna laminate a strip like this hold on I'm not prepared I got some scraps here that I can try to demonstrate with and then I'll cut the angle and put a strip like that and do the same thing here and then mirror that on the top and then and then just cut out the final shape um, using a pattern bit on my router but I'll have the grain flowing in the correct direction for all of the little the, that farmhouse trestle table shape I, I still I just got some dimensions that I wrote down on my table here and I'm getting ready to lay this pattern out on a piece of MDF to use as, as my uh, template for the router. The most challenging part of this build has easily been this piece here, the back decorative backrest of the chair. I think I've already shown you the, uh, the pattern that I made out of MDF. Um, I just laid it out and then cut it out on the bandsaw. Got some of the straight cuts on the table saw. And that's why you see kind of little uh, little bite marks in there, but that doesn't matter because the diameter of the pattern bit on my router is a lot wider than that, so it won't interfere with the pattern routing. As you can see over here, it's kind of a convoluted setup. I've got to to glue these things together. So if you remember. I created uh, these these really thin eighth inch uh, panels and now what I'm doing is I'm gluing the um, hold on a second uh, I'm gluing pieces in in a certain pattern onto that kind of like making plywood but not exactly let me pull off this these table legs that I'm using as uh, clamping weight uh, to show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is just the first piece, the vertical piece. Um, it also has the two uh, diagonal pieces that meet up to it too, and the idea is to mimic the shape of the trestle that holds up the tabletop um, on the t matching table that these chairs will uh, go to. So on this side you can see, get a better idea um, of how that's going to look. I'll take off some of this tape here and show you some of the detail. It's not perfect. 
I'm not sure what it would take to get it perfect, but I think with a little bit of Timbermate and some sanding and the stain and everything will make it look perfect. So this is the rough um, shape. I guess I would call it the blank for the back. And then I put the pattern. I'll take, once I get the other side done here, I'll get this pattern back on here and retrace it. And then cut it out on the bandsaw, rough. And then once again, I'll use my pattern routing bit. Um, I'll attach this to this and use the pattern routing bit to finish it off. And uh, this is what you end up with. Well, not exactly. You end up with almost this. I'm trying to get it to where we can look at it here. So, you pretty much get this shape. Um, it, you're going to have a little bit of extra material inside these sharp corners here. And so then I had to do the old elbow grease and grab a chisel and just very carefully chisel that out. I also use a small saw, a little pull saw that I have, just to make those corners nice and sharp. So the whole purpose of this, I didn't want to just cut this out of a big hunk of wood. I, I didn't think that the back rest would stay together if it was just one big piece of wood. Like the seat will be, because the seat's going to be supported around the whole perimeter. So there's lots of support there. The backrest is not. The backrest is only going to be supported on those ends there. And so these attachments here, being as narrow as they are, I was afraid they were going to break if I went in this orientation. And it would be even worse if I had the wood going in this orientation. That's why you end up with this plywood effect here. There we go. So essentially what I've done is just made some three ply oak plywood. The final dimension is three eighths of an inch and that will help constrict it, keep it from wanting to expand and contract with that humidity, with the humidity swings but it also makes it appear to be made out of one, two, three pieces of wood. Which, I mean, actually it's made out of several pieces of wood. But it just, um, basically I'm just mimicking the joinery that was used to make the trestle of the trestle table. So hopefully that'll make sense to you. I'm very, very pleased with the way it turned out. Um, I was This is the thing that kept me up at night uh, with this project, just because I just could not figure out a good way to do it and make it look good and not just make it out of plywood, because plywood has a very thin outer layer, and and I don't know. So once it's all finished and everything, we'll, we'll see how it uh, actually turns out and if it actually looks good. I just remembered I was going to show you how I, you know, did this pattern on here on this rough blank. It's so oversized. I got to make some more of these uh, these thin strips, and I'm going to make them a little bit closer to the right size, just so it's not as unruly. So first, I got to get this tape off so it won't interfere. And I actually have to go cut some angles real quick. It's okay, I've got my miter saw already set up. Okay. So here's my strip. You know, they're gonna they're gonna kind of just go right into here. I want to get them before in before the glue completely dries on this piece. And I want to get them in as tight as I can get them. Leave as little of a gap as possible. I'm going to use some tape to hold it down before it just keep it in place while I put weight on it because if I don't keep use tape to tape it down, it'll slide all over the place while I'm putting the weight on it. 
So it's pretty simple. Just kind of line up where uh, it's going to be. Mark it. Lay down some glue. Spread it. And I glue the whole piece down just because if you have any part that's loose when you're running it through that pattern bit, um, it'll start to make it vibrate really bad and it could potentially chip out really bad in like into the finished part. So I'll just use a little extra glue and glue the whole piece down. I'm referencing the piece that's underneath here. That's how I know where this piece goes. I get it pressed up in there nice and tight. And then I grab a piece of tape. And I, I, uh, I put the tape down on this uh, loose piece here and then I pull it really tight as I'm setting it down. And I do one on the bottom too, like this. All right, that's not going anywhere. And now I'm just going to repeat that for the other four. All right, so now that I've got all the pieces placed and taped, you notice that you know this wood is so thin it just wants to curl even with just the moisture uh, in the glue, and so. The key is trying to keep it as flat as possible, so I use this piece of uh, swan stone. It's like Corian. Uh, it's just like an artificial countertop stone. Um, I use that. It just happened to be the exact size that I need. And then uh, I'm going to take you guys for a ride here. I'm going to drop the table a little bit. because now I put about 200 pounds of weight on top of this this guy so I start with these 50 pound boxes of table legs <clears throat> like that and then to hold it all together, I slap a special 100 pound weight on top. Ugh, man. Whew, more than one use for a planer, that's for sure. So it's about 200 pounds of weight, and uh, hopefully it compresses that just fine to make it nice and flat. It did a good job on the, the last one, so. All in all, it takes about five hours, maybe a little bit more, to make one of these blanks, and it's just the blank. So it's quite time consuming. But like I said, I couldn't think of a better way to do it. Well, I figure since I showed you how I did the glue up, I'll show you how I complete these decorative back pieces. Uh, once again, just as a reminder, this is what the decorative back piece looks like once it's complete and it will go inside the uh, backrest of these chairs that I'm making. Okay, first thing I have to do is get all this weight off of the, um, the glue up. These boxes of table legs came in handy after all. up now get it to another working height all right so here is the completed glue up let's see what it looks like now by the time I got maybe to the fifth one here 
I finally uh, quit making so many mistakes. The hardest part was getting these seams to just stay there. Even with the tape, it would want to wander. It almost made me start believing that the, that the glue was expanding or something, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. This humidity today, I'm filming this in the summer of 2018, I don't know uh, when I'm actually going to get the video out on YouTube, but, you know, we've been dealing with this heat wave for the past almost three months, and in St. Louis, the humidity is so high that, just to give you an example, this glue has been drying for three days, and it is still wet to the touch. So... When you have this 100% relative humidity, it makes it hard for anything to dry. I'm a little concerned about when it comes time to apply a finish to this these chairs when they're complete. You see the same thing with this guy. It's been drying for over 24 hours, and it's still almost as wet as, as if uh, I had just put the glue down. So, anyway. <clears throat> when I glued these up, I made sure that I had one reference off of the main panel here. Um, so this, these, these vertical pieces on both sides actually line up with the bottom edge of the panel, and this is going to help me square everything up. Um, but in, in the meantime, before I do any of that, I'm actually going to skip a step that I've been doing. What I was doing in the past was I was uh, cutting off all the excess and then squaring the panel back up again and then I'd put this pattern on and um, and then go back to the bandsaw and cut out close to the line but experience tells me that really all I need to do is line up against this reference edge right here line the pattern up to it and everything will uh, line up properly. So, I may be uh, eating my words here, but I'm pretty sure that's how it's going to work. Because I'm using a pattern bit in the router, and uh, so even if this is off by a little bit and it's not perfectly square to the panel, the router will, will fix that with the pattern. I'm actually filming on the 4th of July t today, and my phone seems to be going crazy for some reason. People making plans. Alright. So there, you can't see it probably on camera, but I've just uh, outlined the pattern. I'm going to go to the bandsaw now and cut out within about a sixteenth inch of a line. Okay, now that it's rough cut uh, to the line, what I do is I'm going to take my pattern and line it back up to the outline that I drew. Once we're lined up good, I'm 
going to go ahead and nail it down. I nailed it in an area that will actually go into a mortise on all these points. You know, just so the nail holes don't show. And so now I've got my pattern bit installed in my router. And I'm going to use this pattern and cut out the final shape. I've mentioned this before, and it bears repeating. If I had my way, I would be using the top bearing for the pattern, and not the bottom bearing. The bottom bearing exposes all two and a half inches, or whatever the, the height is here of this uh, cutting surface. And I've got my hands really close to the bit when I'm working. But the router that's attached to this router table will not go down far enough for me to be able to run with the pattern on top and run that top piece. So I'm stuck with it like this. I believe running off the, the uh, bottom bearing is more precise, more accurate because you have less run out at this point, but it's definitely safer running off the top bearing. Pattern bit does a pretty good job of getting me a repeatable uh, shape, but since the bit itself is a half inch in diameter um, in these tight corners, it will not reach. You can see where it kind of swoops up here and here to a certain degree, just a little bit. So now what I have to do is uh, use a decent, nice, sharp chisel. And I use a little, little pull saw here to uh, clean up those inside corners.